Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today at you to do you I'm going to share with you my five worst productivity mistakes. These led me to sour my relationship with work, which led me to some pretty major burnout. Maybe you'll recognize some of these in yourself. And if so, perhaps you can do something about them now to avoid completely tanking like I did. And uh, stick around to the end because number five is, well, it's the sneakiest. All right, let's dive in. Number one productivity mistake, tying myself worth up with my work. Now, James Clear in Atomic Habits, he talks about purposely getting your ego and identity involved with habit making. You declare yourself to be someone who is the kind of person who runs every morning, say. And when your identity is tied up with something, you have intrinsic motivation and you have more like internal motivation to stick with that habit. You have a sense of pride about it or, you know, it just is what you do. And that can be really effective in habit formation, especially for the small stuff, you know, those daily habits and routines that you want to develop. I'm the kind of person who flosses twice a day. I'm the kind of person who grocery shops and cooks instead of spending, you know, extra dollars on takeout. Maybe you're even a little bit smug about it. And yes, you may miss a day or two, but the habit is intertwined with your identity. I am not a smoker. I am a hiker. And because of that, you can brush off a missed day as no big deal and just start again the next day with faith. You haven't fallen off the wagon because there's really no wagon to fall off of. You're just you on the road. That sounds good, right? But what about this? What about... I'm the kind of person who has a stellar reputation in their field, or I'm the kind of person who provides a fulfilling and lucrative workplace for 50 people at my business, or I'm the kind of person who always goes the extra mile for a client. Ooh, now the stakes are getting higher. And when things don't work out right in this level, it can be crushing or when you're just maybe too pooped to produce, when you're unable to keep up with providing that carefully crafted feedback to your employee, you feel like your identity is crumbling, or at least mine did when I had this all torn up together. So ugh, it was I disorienting and terribly uncomfortable. Now, your relationship to your work, to whatever you're producing, if it has soured, leaving you with a bad taste in your mouth, ugh, it's just no good. So. Maybe consider your identity carefully. Perhaps think about framing your identity from other things that are truly more intrinsic to you, like your kindness, your generosity, your loving nature, your wisdom, humor, whatever it may be that makes you you. Or maybe you just hold on to that work-related identity a little more loosely. Maybe you don't have to have your entire identity wrapped up in work or in whatever it is that you produce, because when things get really in these higher stakes situations where you've tied up your identity with work, things become really demoralizing in those inevitable times when your productivity levels dip, when productivity and identity don't align. Ugh, it's just, it's demoralizing, it's souring. And when you're in that position, burnout is right around the corner. All right, productivity mistake number two, acting as if the law of diminishing returns doesn't exist. Who boy does it exist? The law of diminishing returns kicks in when the same effort gets you fewer results. It's two in the morning and you're trying to hit that deadline, but you're so tired that you're making mistakes and now you're spending extra time fixing those mistakes and now you're just going in circles the law of diminishing returns has kicked in. In fact, it kicked in about seven hours ago. You should have just gone home, had a nice dinner, zoned out with some Netflix and called it a night. When we behave as if the law of diminishing returns doesn't exist, we create problems for ourselves in the immediate. We are wasting our time making mistakes or just working inefficiently when it probably could be better used just resting or changing up our activities to refresh our minds. It has long-term effects too. Work is no fun when it's a slog and it is definitely a slog when you are in diminishing returns mode. And when work is a slog, your relationship is starting to sour and sour means burnout. So I had to learn this lesson hard. No law of diminishing returns kind of work. So I offer up to you, pay attention. When you notice it's time to call it quits for the day, call it quits. All right, here's a weird one for number three. I call it the social time catch 22. Does this sound familiar? So, you know, worky, 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 worky. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I can't make it to that thing you invited me to tonight. I gotta work. Or, oh shoot, no, sorry, can't make it work. Yeah, well, if that keeps happening enough, 
you'll stop getting invited to stuff. Your relationships will have flaked away and you'll find yourself honestly a bit lonely. Oh, that's okay. You tell yourself, I'll just fill the time with work. And this is good. You think I'll work more and I'll get caught up, maybe even ahead. And then, you know, at that point I can reach out to friends, but somehow it doesn't really function that way. Instead, when you're available for work, it just begets more work. Cause let's face it, the piles just keep on piling on. Your boss sees that you're available, so they assign you more. Or if you, your own boss, you commit to additional projects or clients that just tie you down. So now you're committed to additional work and really don't have the time for friends. Uh-oh, <laughs> now you've got yourself in a pickle. You let work falsely thinking that you don't have time for friends win. And now that you've stuffed the time with more work, now you really don't have the time for friends. You're not fulfilling your need for social time and you're working too much and you've put an extra burden on your work, somehow asking it to fulfill your social needs, which it's not designed to do. Sometimes I think of it this way. I can't remember where I heard this idea, but it's like your life has a wheel of needs for work, for play, for rest, for adventure, for social time, family time, for nourishment. Work is only one of the things on that wheel and torturing your work time into fulfilling more than its share of life's wheels of needs <laughs> is unlikely to be successful. You'll start to resent work for keeping you away from fulfilling your other needs. Relationship with work is then soured Next stop, burnout. So take it from me who burned herself out, shut down that computer, shift gears and go see your friends. All right, we're on to number four, but before we do that, just a quick reminder that if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a like. And while you're there, you can hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out any, on any future content. All right, on to number four. Number four productivity mistake, exercise breaks are for later. How many times have you told yourself, oh no, I can't exercise today. Today is different. Today is special. I don't have time to exercise today. Well, when you keep telling yourself that, that today is special and today's work is more important than your self-care, you're behaving as if your future self doesn't exist. And I'm not talking about the future self who wants to be 15 pounds lighter. That's who cares about that? I'm talking about the future self who is fried from doing too much work and not moving enough. Fried is another way of saying soured and soured means what? Burnout. So guess what? You do. You do have time to exercise. Squeak it in. Park at the end of the parking lot. Take a 10 minute walk around the block. Five minutes of marching in place at your desk. A 20 minute yoga video, a three hour hike, whatever floats your boat. You have time and you have it today. Exercise breaks are for now not for later. All right, number five is a sneaky one, but it is real. I can organize my way out of overcommitment. Saying you can organize your way out of overcommitment is like saying you can organize your way out of a garage piled high with three dead lawnmowers and the scratched up turkey pan you never use for Thanksgiving anymore, which is on top of a bike with a bent spoke that you said you'd fix someday. If I can just get more bins, I just need better labels. Nope, you need to give away the bike Check the turkey pan and well, get rid of your lawn. They're bad for the environment. But the point is you cannot organize your way out of overcommitting. I lived like this for years. I thought if I could just plan better or if I could just wake up earlier or if I could just shave off this little bit of time. <sighs> now, yeah, you can improve your efficiency and sure there are a few time-saving hacks out there but none of that is going to solve the problem of having too much to do. Now, you can sometimes buy time with money by hiring people to do things for you, and you can sometimes ask the people in your life to help you pick up the slack, but otherwise you are going to have to say no to get your commitments down to a reasonable level. If you don't face the reality of the overcommitment, you'll always feel like you're not doing enough. You always feel like you just aren't good enough. Guess what? That leads to feeling crappy about your work. And guess where that leads? Yeah, burnout. So do what I wish I had done much earlier. 
Revisit your commitments and slash them down until you can get back into what you can actually do. Okay, so there are my five productivity mistakes I made for way too long. They soured my relationship work and that led me to some serious burnout for me. It took me over a year to recover. So any of these ring true for you? Let us know in the comments. I mean, I, I sure hope they don't, but if they do, maybe you can take some steps now to make some changes and avoid that burnout, which is just right there down the road. In any case, be sure to take care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.